Hey guys, Island Turtle here. Welcome to Balmy Spirit. This is the weekly intuitive astrology reading for November 6th to the 12th. Welcome. Hang in there with me today, guys. I am so tired. I like, and the fatigue hit me out of like nowhere today too. And I've been trying to get this weekly done for like two days, um, but it's just kind of the nature of the energy right now. And actually more so the energy of the week we, that I actually want to talk about. And I think that's part of it. <clears throat> I know me and a lot of other people um, who do this kind of work, we tend to experience energy waves a little earlier than most of the collective. And I think I've just been feeling that. Um, <clears throat> a lot of disruptive energy. A lot of disruptive energy. And Saturn actually just went direct today. I'm recording on the 5th of November. Um, and I think that also has something to do with it. But anyway, blah, blah, blah. Hi, welcome. <laughs> if you're new, don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and comment. Um, the way this works, I go over the astrology of the week, I give you my two cents on it, and I go ahead and I do channel messages and equal cards as well for the collective and elements, okay? Um, there's a Patreon, there's a Vimeo, links are below for your convenience. Let's go ahead and get started, okay? I'm going to go ahead and do a timestamp here. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, guys, just bear with me. I also got some, like, throat chakra stuff going on as I normally do, but... So it's been it's been wearing me out and like I said I had this wave of fatigue like hit me like an hour before I wanted to record and it was just like darn it <laughs> but we're here we're here and we're gonna do this <clears throat> so before I get into the <coughs> before I get into the astrology I want to just give you a little bit of a rundown of what to expect this week and then we'll get into the details mm. <clears throat> now this week is interesting because we have a lot of really positive aspects going on that are helping us to be studious. That's something that was coming up a lot. Like, so if there's a discipline you want to learn about or there's something that you want to revisit, but like, again, this around the energy of, of discipline or, or study, this is a great week for that. There's also a great week to have music or arts as an outlet. You're going to want those outlets. Trust me, you're going to want those outlets, okay? Uh, physical activity, even sex is a great outlet this week too. Thank you, Mars Scorpio and all that goodness, says the Scorpio. Um, <clears throat> there's also a lot of very productive energy. There's a lot of support in getting us very focused, very motivated, very driven. Um, also, we have a lot of support with being social and also collaborating with people and getting in the mix. Now, that could be for work. That could be for friends. That could even be in a very flirty, sensual, romantic way, too, because we have a lot of Scorpio energy and it's also being supported by Pisces as well. So... <laughs> And Venus is in that mix too. So a lot of really, really good stuff. Now, here's where it gets interesting. We got an opposition to Uranus that's very strong between Mars and Uranus. Um, and then on the new moon Scorpio, which is the 13th. So we're still going to be affected by that new moon Scorpio energy this week, just like at the later end. But that opposition to Uranus is really throwing a wrench into things. Because it into things. Excuse me. Things. If I could talk. That opposition to Uranus. It can bring unexpected changes. It can bring unexpected meetings, which can actually work out pretty well. Oh my God, I'm like so. It's weird. I'm like tired, but I can tell this is crown stuff too. <laughs> Again, bear with me. I'm probably going to have to go slow. Um, but that Uranus energy can also bring mood swings, emotional outbursts, outbursts of anger and lashing out. Um, so just know that while there's so many great things that are happening this week, the thing you can count on is a wrench being thrown into the flow of things. It doesn't mean good things won't happen. It doesn't mean good things will even be stopped either. Just that there may be unexpected things that cause a little kerfuffle along the way this week, um, but also could bring some pleasant surprises as well. But disruptor, 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 and really when in terms of anger, there's going to be a lot of anger that comes up this week or people are being th thrown out this week, which is why it's important to have your outlets, okay? Um, so that's kind of the nitty gritty. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and get into the aspects here, okay? Now for this first cluster of energy, um, this is that very productive energy that I was talking about. There's also a little bit of like, well, there's productivity and I also wanna say very abundant productivity. Um, there's also this feeling too, I felt, I felt a little like, probing it felt a little provoking like persistent thank you that's the word it felt very there's a persistent energy with the cluster I'm about to talk about <clears throat> and a desire for people to take accountability for shit there's gonna be a lot of that because we're coming out of a week of 
uh, vindication. We're coming out of a week of truth seeking and truth sharing. And we still have a little bit of that too, because we do have so much Scorpio energy and Mercury and Scorpio, though Mercury's moving, Mercury is moving into Sag, but Mercury moving into Sag is also still about truth and bigger truths and philosophy and all of that sort of stuff too. So again, still kind of playing into that truth sharing and truth seeking energy. Um, but the more we hang in, in that realm, the more we're also going to want people to be accountable to those truths, things they've done, things they've said, things they haven't done, <laughs> things they haven't said, and people might want to hold you accountable as well to stuff like that too, okay? So keep that in mind for this week, but let's get into it. <laughs> it's going to drive me crazy, I already know it. So the sun and Mars are both in Scorpio and they're both conjunct this week. Now they're going to stay conjunct for a while. They actually won't be exact until, um, I want it, yeah, the 18th, until the 18th of November, but still very strong here. Mars is opposing Uranus all week. It will be very strong on the new moon Scorpio. It'll be exact <clears throat> on 11-11 actually. That's the other thing. November 10th, November 11th is where you're going to feel a big shift of energy, not just because it's a portal day, but also because of the aspects that are at play. It's like literally we have all the really like yumminess of all the good stuff I was talking about. And then as we hit like 11, 10, 11, 11, that's where the oppositions and the challenging aspects really start to get strong or even peak or hit their climax. So something to pay attention to there. And that is kind of in the middle of the week. Just know the shift will definitely take place on November 10th, November 11th, all right? <clears throat> but Mars is opposing Uranus. And again, they'll be very strong on the new moon Scorpio. I believe the new moon Scorpio is happening at 20 degrees and Uranus is at 21. So very, very strong opposition there. Uh, the sun is also sextile Orcus, Orcus being in Virgo. And because of that, since Sun and Mars are conjunct, Mars will also be sextile Orcus, more so in the beginning of the week and then it pitters out, but still there. Um, the Sun will also be opposing Uranus because Mars is opposing Uranus, but that's going to be more at the end of the week when we actually are hitting that new moon Scorpio energy, right? Hence why the new moon will be opposing Uranus because the Sun is opposing Uranus. <clears throat> so those are the aspects, but how this plays out, the Sun and Mars working in Scorpio together is a great aspect. That's a That's like... That's something that we can work really well with when we're trying to be productive or get things done or being we want to be very focused on something. We want to have a lot of motivation, a lot of vitality towards something. Now, because it is in Scorpio, um, there is going to be that heightened sense of intuition. I would really, really pay attention to your intuition this week because that was something else I was getting where it's like, <clears throat> like things might get muddy at a certain point. Um, like you feel really clear. You feel like you're having good conversations. You feel like you're learning a lot. Um, you feel like you're understanding a lot and then stuff starts to get murky. Stuff starts to get murky. Relationships start to get murky. I'll get deeper into that too. Um, so it's just something to keep in mind. Pay attention to your intuition, okay? Uh, now the sextile to Orcus, that's that justice seeking, that truth seeking, that that wanting to hold people accountable. But Orcus is also about study and truth and enlightenment. And so the sun and Mars both working with Orcus in this way, it's like there's a lot of opportunities um, to really get deep into your studies because Scorpio likes to go deep. Virgo likes to be disciplined and detailed. And Mercury is also in Scorpio moving into Sag, also will deepen that. Mercury is also working with Pluto, I'll get into that later, also, want, also wanting to deepen that insight and knowing and truth and all that good stuff. So again, if you're going to pick up anything at any time to learn, I'd, I'd pick it up this week <clears throat> to study. Again, in just terms of studying. Um, but again, Orcus, for those of you guys who don't know, Orcus is a dwarf planet. And Orcus is typically about bringing justice to wrongdoers, basically, like vengeance kind of energy. And that was where I was getting that feeling of like wanting to hold people accountable, wanting to hold yourself accountable, especially playing off of Scorpio. Scorpio is all about that. Orcus is about that. And even Virgo to an extent is about that. Virgo doesn't mess around. Like when Virgo is very serious and is very focused on something or, or um, has put a lot of attachment or investment into something, Virgo doesn't fuck around. Virgo gets it done, right? So this is that be accountable, don't fuck around sort of energy. <clears throat> okay. Now, the opposition to Uranus. Again, the sun and Mars are both opposing Uranus. That is that disruptive energy. It can even create nervous energy. 
So something keep in my stomach just went bleh. So keep that in mind too. It can create anxiety, um, a need for new, a need for excitement, a need for anything that is not your normal or not routine. Um, and this is where things can get like kind of wonky because it's like we have so much support in being focused and driven and productive and creative. Um, <clears throat> And it's like to get in a flow, it's like a flow state, basically, a lot of support to be in a flow state or to be working towards something. And then opposition to Uranus comes along and will change that or bring little changes along the way. So be adaptable and be open to that. And just know there will be a lot of unexpected shit happening in the next couple of weeks, I really want to say, because the Newman Scorpio will be opposing Uranus. Um, now, moving on. <clears throat> There is some relationship stuff coming up here. So Mercury is really, really active this week too. Again, Mercury is moving from Scorpio to Sagittarius and Venus is moving from Virgo to Libra and they're aspecting each other as well. Um, you have uh, Mercury sextile Venus, Mercury trine Neptune, Mercury sextile Pluto, Venus trine Pluto, Mercury is also square Saturn, Mercury is also square Lilith, and there's some Sedna activity as well, both, both Venus and Mercury are aspecting Sedna. I'm not going to focus on Sedna too much because it is a very long-term um celestial body and it's not a, it's not a planet and so while it is influencing us and it's actually really helping us to move into this new sense of an of a new era because sedna moves very slow to our knowledge anyway within our own like little system sedna has the longest orbit excuse me and it just moved into gemini this year <clears throat> after being in taurus i believe for 60 years almost 60 years, maybe closer to 70 years. I, I forget the exact number, but it's something like that, right? So it's just, it's been establishing a new era for us. And with Sedna moving into Gemini, it is about like new reality, new truth, new ideas, new ways of having relationships, new ways of having allies. And friendship seems to be the biggest thing too coming up a lot lately. So that's kind of interesting as well. Um, but just know that Sedna is playing that role for us on a collective level. And with Mercury and Venus aspecting Sedna with all this other activity, just know that that component of new era, whole new, whole new perspective on reality, whole new truth, and also in the realm of polarity, because we're talking about Gemini, is kind of tied up into this Mercurial Venus stuff, okay? <clears throat> now, with Mercury sextile Venus, and also in a supportive aspect to Pluto and Neptune, and then Venus in a supportive aspect to Pluto, there's this really yummy social energy, a lot of flirting, <laughs> A lot of flirtiness could be going on this week. A lot of sensual energy when it comes to our words and how we connect to people, relate to people, bring people in. So I expect a lot of like flirty stuff going down. There's probably some like romantic intimacy, sexual sort of energy going down this week when it comes to relationships. Um, and Venus also working with Pluto and Mercury working with Pluto brings it to a soul level. Soulful conversations, soulful relationships going deep very intimate with each other. Um, this is also really great if you are being very creative this week or you have like your eyes set on projects, especially with the way Mars and Sun and Orcus are aspecting, aspecting each other in the way that I've already mentioned. Now, here's where it gets interesting. Mercury square with Saturn. That kicks up later in the week. That kicks up later in the week. Um, and actually, yeah, I, yeah, I wrote it down on 1110. And also towards the end of the week, Mercury being square Lilith. And so we actually have this like potential for relationships this week where it goes from hot to cold. Whether they're new people or people that have been around in your life, like it, it could almost feel like you really get deep with somebody, like you really go there and like whether that's how your relationship normally is, friendship, family or otherwise, right? But you're able to really freaking go there by the beginning of the week. By the end of the week, emotional distance maybe even a little bit of separation, maybe even difficulty actually hearing each other. And it's it, it, gets, it can be a little confusing and it may be confusing for some of you when that happens, if it happens to you that way, right? Where it's like, wait, I thought we were good. I thought we we're on the same page. What the hell just happened in our communication? You know, it can, it can kind of create that, especially with Mercury being square Lilith as well. There's, uh, there's something about that that has like this feeling of get off me get off me, let me have my freedom, let me do what I want to do, right? There's also this kind of, it's like a bite. I can feel a bite with Mercury being square Lilith, like a bit of a sassiness, a bit of a, you're not going to tell me what's what, you're not going to tell me this, you're not going to tell me that, I'm going to do this and I'm going to say that. It's got a sass to it. 
basically is what I'm getting at. And then the fact that we also have that Mars opposing Uranus energy for anger and outbursts and shit. And then Orcus like wanting us to hold people accountable, hold, a, hold us to be accountable. There's going to be some stuff that goes down with relationships. It's going to be kind of unavoidable. It doesn't have to be bad. It doesn't have to be bad. And actually there's a cool thing happening that I'm going to get to in a minute. Um, it doesn't have to be bad. And yes, it may have confusion, but sorry. I thought that was on Do Not Disturb. Um, but just know that that's something that could be coming up this week as well. Okay. Now, let's move into the next cluster. This is where things could get very nice when it comes to the weird shit that may be playing out. The, the disruptor. I'll just call it the disruptor force of Uranus and the disruptor force of square Saturn, right? With Mercury anyway. So here we have Juno in Virgo, seven to nine degrees, being sextile Jupiter in Taurus. Vesta, which has now recently went retrograde in Cancer, is sitting at seven degrees Cancer for a bit. Um, Vesta is also sextile Jupiter. So they're both sextile Jupiter and they're both aspecting, aspecting each other in a sextile. I can't talk today. It's making me nuts. It's also because I'm tired and I've got like, oh, you know what? Duh. I'll just do that. It's going to probably take a bit for it to like help. Um, that That's how out of it I was. I was just like, oh, right. <laughs> so for those of you guys who are like, what is she talking about? If you have a lot of crown stuff going on, like you're, oh, well, that's art. Oh my God, I can already feel it being a little bit better. Um, if you got a lot of crown stuff, like it's really open or you're getting a lot of energy or downloads or just extra sensitive that day, if you actually cover your crown, it'll like... It'll help dissipate. I like, I'm honestly just like almost instantly feeling better. Um, it'll help to dissipate that. Wow. I actually think I can focus better. That's insane. Anyway, so Juno sextile Jupiter, Vesta a sextile Jupiter, and then Juno sextile Vesta. This is cool because any, for those who are not familiar, Vesta is like blueprint energy. Vesta represents sacred flame. It's what lights up your soul. It's it, what gets you out of bed in the morning, what you care about, what you were put on this earth to do, and what lights your soul on fire, right? Juno rules marriage and partnerships, also protection of women. And then there's Jupiter just helping these energies work together, basically. So this is where you, this is going to be the light in the muckiness, the light in the, actually just showed me a lotus flower, the light in the mud, so to speak. This aspect will help to show you through the mood swings, through the angry emotional outbursts, through um, the confusion of feeling really hot with someone then really cold or really intimate and then needing a lot of space. And even when it comes to being creative or, or you're or getting into like a study or a discipline this week, like you might feel on a roll with that and then hit a wall, suddenly hit a rut or get really tired. It's like, that's the kind of energy we're working with this week, like on and then off. And it's like, what just happened, right? Think of it like that. Through the midst of the muckiness in the mud, these aspects will actually really highlight, like it's almost like the muddier it gets, the more you're going to really see partnership and personal calling. Partnership is different than relationship. This is also something I talked about recently, where relationships are just all the connections we have with people. Partnership is a connection you have with someone where you both show the fuck up. You both show up in, in some sort of way that is mutual that is you are on the same page it is for a purpose partnership comes with purpose not all relationships have a purpose partnership has a purpose and a shared intention a shared goal a shared meaning like starting a business like starting a family like getting married like things like that right <clears throat> the muddier and more chaotic it gets the more that will become obvious in your life, according to the people in your life, right? Like seeing who fits that and who doesn't, um, especially those who actually support your calling, who support your path that lights you up, the path that your soul wants to walk, the people who support that, they'll become even more obvious, the muddier it gets. It's just up to you to actually trust it. That's a free will thing. Okay. It's funny because like I started wearing these glasses because I couldn't find my other ones for like a couple days and I've gotten really used to it. And I'm like, maybe I will just keep wearing these. Um hold on. I have another one too that they're just they're basically the same frames, but they're just this kind of blue all the way around. But yeah, I'm liking these. Anyway, sorry, just throwing that out there. Anyway, coming back. So 
I like that. That feels very good to me. This energy will also be peaking on 11-11 as well. So while we're going to have a shift where the challenging aspects are going to really kick up at that same time, that's also part of the whole the muddier it gets, the clearer that will get, okay? Um, that's kind of all I want to talk about. Just again, make sure you have outlets this week, art, creativity, physical activity, sex, music, in that realm, in that realm. Um, I'd even have a couple because we do have so much disruptive energy. It's like, I would have your goals and things that you want to do and get done this week and focus on this week or people you want to see and spend time with this week. And then as, as things get disrupted, things you can fall back on. Like, I'm going to go on this date. And let's say they stand you up or get canceled on or something. You got a plan B to go to the gym. You got a plan C to play music. You got a, a plan D to like do some experimental cooking. I don't know. You understand what I'm saying, right? It's like have multiple tentative plans this week. All that will help you to feel good, um, to feel creative and inspired or to like feed your sense of purpose. Okay. And also have, you know, some, have some social stuff on the docket. Definitely have social stuff on the docket. The social stuff will be nicer at the beginning of the week versus the end. Um, but have some, be sure to have some. Now, as far as how this is going to be affecting signs and whatnot, um, I had everything listed out for each section and I just, I always forget. I just, I forgot. Sorry, my bad. Um, Scorpio. Scorpio is your season. Happy birthday, Scorpios. Um, I would just focus on your whole house of Scorpio personally. Uh, you do have a lot going on from, yeah, 15 to 20 degrees, even like late degrees Scorpio too. I, I would focus on the whole house of Scorpio where a lot of this is going to be going down. But I would say the, if you had to like narrow it down, the last half, like 15 to 29 degrees Scorpio is what I would focus on where all this shit is going to be playing out. Okay. That's going to be where Mercury is, where Mars is, where the sun is. Um, those are the three biggest players this week too, right? Um, also know that wherever you have Taurus, specifically that 21 degree point, again, looking to your houses, that's based off your rising sign. If you're new, if you're new, like look up your chart, look where your rising sign is and it's going to have like the zodiac signs and the degree ranges, right? So it's like, just, just look there to where Taurus 21 degrees falls. That's going to be where all the disruptive shit is going to happen. The driving force of the disruptive things so let's say that's your fourth house there could be literally stuff breaking in your house um you could literally have family like blowing your up your life like hitting up your phone whatever um and it's like it's literally disrupting the flow of your life and your work and everything you want to do right so that's just an example um <clears throat> let's see what else do i want to mention here virgo is pretty important too Vir yeah, actually, Virgo and Scorpio, they're right there with each other because Virgo, 15 to 20 degrees is important and the late degrees are important as well. So Scorpio, 15 to 29 degrees, Virgo, 15 to 29 degrees is where a lot of this stuff is going to be going down because that's also where um, Venus is and Orcus is, is in that late degrees Virgo. But they're, again, like Scorpio, Virgo, they're playing right there with each other this whole week. Um, I would also pay attention to... Ah, uh, Cancer. Cancer 5 to 10 degrees. Wherever you have Cancer 5 to 10 degrees, that is going to be the light that shines brightest in the muddiest of mud. The lotus flower, so to speak. That's where Vesta is. That Juno, Vesta, Jupiter energy I talked about, where it's just like the more weird shit gets, the more obvious true partnership gets, the more obvious your, your personal calling becomes. And anyone who supports that, that calling becomes. So to reiterate, Scorpio and Virgo, 15 to 29 degrees. Okay. Cancer, 5 to 10 degrees. That's the light. And wherever you have Taurus, 21 degrees. Disruptor, disruptor, disruptor. Okay. Okay. Let's go ahead and get into some reads. Mmm. Give me a minute. Okay. 
Okay, let's get into the collective read. Um, I need to change that timestamp because it's like way, way longer than it was before. Okay. All right, where? Oh, I'm also sore because I'm working out. Aye. All right, where are we going first for the collective here? Actually, I don't want any of those. Hold on, let me grab another deck. I'll be right back. <sighs> Between my crown, my tiredness, my soreness. <laughs> I'm a mess today. All right, we're going to start with the Energy Oracle deck. Let's see, is this prepped? Oh, it's not prepped yet. Okay, well, we're going to hang out till I prep it. <laughs> so I can prep it is what I meant to say. Uh, collective, collective, collective. November 6th to the 12th. Unexpected meetings. They're really bringing that up right now. Unexpected meetings and encounters. Again, things could go hot to cold. Um, don't make assumptions is what I'm hearing with that. Don't make assumptions. Don't make judgment calls too early, especially if it's like literally you just met met somebody. Um, we we got fluctuating energy right now. Okay, we have fluctuating energy right now. So just keep that in mind. Um, yeah, just keep that in mind. Any messages or insights for the collective this week? Any messages or insights for the collective this week? November 6th to the 12th. November 6th to the 12th. I'm getting solar energy. November 6th to the 12th. Yeah, I feel like people are going to be ballsy this week. I feel like people are going to be ballsy and like, to be honest, it almost has this feeling of being slave to your emotions, which is not the goal. We want to have mastery over our emotions, right? Not control, mastery, right? The mastery of emotions is innate, like it's an ability to, sorry, let me rephrase that. It is a capability and ability to allow emotions to always be in flow, always be in flow, but you have mastery over your behavior. You have mastery over observing your emotions and your feelings to understand them and not be drowning in them, right? But we all have an ebb and flow to that, but it's interesting that they're bringing it up like that. Any messages or insights for the collective? November 6th to the 12th. Shit is getting stirred up. I can feel it. I can feel it. The pot is getting stirred. The pot is getting stirred. Excuse me. November 6th to the 12th. Hmm. Starting with victory. That's an interesting first card to get. Getting a heavy, a, a big six of wands is what I want to say significant six of wands energy here it almost feels like starting out the week it's like we're starting out the week feeling pretty good um feeling confident assured i don't think that's gonna last um not trying to be negative it's just what i'm feeling i like i don't know why i feel like all of a sudden i heard some of y'all talking <laughs> going like oh she's so negative her readings are so negative eh, it's just, they're just honest <laughs> they're just honest um yeah I, I just keep getting six of wands i just keep getting six of wands energy um i do feel like there has been success in something though as we're starting out the week there has been a recent success there has been how do i want to say this there there's a perfect way to say this hold on give me a second I just have to sneeze. <sighs> uh. Oh, it's like right there. It's like right, you get that tingly sensation in your nose. Um, there has been a recent success. There's a recent success, but it's like, I feel like there's other things that are external, maybe even a little tied to this. It's not like it's suddenly going to blow up in your face. That's not the feeling I'm getting. It's like... <sighs> 
I want the perfect words for this. It's like I get the six of wands and then the tower, but it doesn't mean it's it's it doesn't mean it's destroying the success. I can't talk, Jesus. Yeah, it doesn't mean that it will destroy the recent success you just have experienced. This success doesn't have to even be work related. It can be maybe you just had a breakthrough with somebody. That's kind of what I, the feeling I'm getting for a lot of you. Like you had a recent breakthrough with somebody or recent clarity about someone. This could even be yourself. It's just like, it feels like a little win. It feels like a little win that makes you very happy, but I just feel like this is coming into the week. I don't feel like it's about the week. I feel like this is where we're starting the week at. And then we're going to hit like a, like a little bit of a tizzy, almost like a tower or like, I feel I literally feel a swirl like stuff is getting stirred like that's the energy how it feels like we're feeling we're feeling okay and we're trying to like sitting on our horse and then suddenly some, something pulls our horse in and we're just going round and round and round it's like something is going to get stirred up this recent success may even cause the stirring up here any messages or insights the world card the world card. Yeah, this opens something. Whatever recent success that you're having coming into the week, and maybe it happens in the week for some of you. I feel like it doesn't. I got to be honest with what I feel. I feel like this is something recent that has opened doors, opened opportunities, maybe with someone you've had a breakthrough with. Maybe if this is like a job or something, maybe now that like you've had this success at this particular job, right now other, other avenues are opening up to you. It just feels like whatever this breakthrough is, it's opened you up. It's opened up for new possibilities. I can feel the stirring though. I can feel it. It literally feels like this. Any other messages or insights for the collective this week? Oh, interesting. Wait, is there more than? No, no, it's just the two. We have garden in the gate and action in reverse. Ugh, that is a whole lot of not moving. So it's interesting. We have recent success, opening opportunities, opening up avenues, opening up channels is also what I'm hearing. These could be channels of emotion. These could be channels and opportunities, uh, like in the form of opportunities is what I meant to say. So these could be emotional. These could be very tangible, very physical. Um, they could be purely energetic. You understand what I'm getting at here. And then we hit this. It's a little bit of a scared energy. Garden in the gate is about safety. Am I going to stay behind my gate or am I, am I going to venture out into the unknown? And action in reverse is literally not moving. Why do I feel irritated? Sorry, I'm like, Whoa. I do. I feel very irritated. Um, mm. We're going to see how this plays out because I just got a couple of I just got a couple of scenarios here. Some of you, you're you're in this space like the world is your oyster or a relationship has finally blossomed, opened up. Like it's got that feeling, again, avenues of emotion or energy or very physical, tangible opportunities to open up doors for you and new directions for you. And some of you, this is actually the reaction to people around you or feeling left behind. Feeling left behind. But some of you, it's about needing to face your fear so you can really embrace these open avenues of emotion and opportunities, okay? So those are the two scenarios that I'm getting there. Any other messages or insights for the collective this week? Mm. Interesting. Oh, card running away from me. Uh, appreciation coming out here. Appreciation is kind of like my nine of pentacles energy. Um, it's a card of gratitude. It's a card of presence. Can you allow yourself to move into that space? This feels like a fear of being present. This, fe this feels like there's hesitancy or anxiety or resistance around being present. I feel a fight here with action and reverse and guard and the um garden and the gate. Ah, I think I get my mouth to work. Um, because appreciation just feels really good. This feels like that confident energy I was feeling over here.
definitely feels like it almost wants to be over here. Again, that sense of confidence, that sense of things are now open. Um, I am available for this, or this is now available to me, right? It's literally feeling like the world is opening up to you, but then there's this inaction. So like I'm saying, like there, there's two ways that I'm getting this. One being you're moving into this very open, receptive state and people around you can't keep up, basically. They can't ride that ride with you and you're gonna see it, it's gonna be obvious. Some of you, the world is available to you, but you need to be the one to face your fear, face your shit and get out of the gate, move beyond the gate. So you can get into this open, confident, they keep saying confident, open, confident, receptive state. Let's see what else wants to come out here. I do, I feel irritated. I feel so irritated right now. <coughs> Any other messages or insights for the collective? Attachment in reverse. Ooh, there's a lot going on there. Hold on, let me get other cards out and I'll talk, and I'll talk about it. Ooh. Oh man, people's insecurities are about to really hit the roof. Okay, so here we go. Attachment in reverse landed over here with victory in the world. This is freedom. This is, I am free of the shit that has held me back. I am free of the shit that has held me here, that has kept me in my safety zone, that has kept me restricted, that has kept me small, kept me safe. But this, this is a free, expanded, open, receptive way of being and feeling really good about it. I keep getting open avenues and channels. Like some of you, especially with attachment, that's like my five of cups center, my five of cups card in this deck. For some of you, that could be you've recently gotten over an emotional blockage. And it's like, whew, and now you're open to receive where you had blockages before. Some of you, that's still very much in the physical. Like maybe you had some financial blockages. Maybe you had some uh, blockages with health, or maybe you had some blockages just in your physical reality. And now whew, those are gone and you have more like tangible freedom to move about in the world or to take on certain opportunities or experiences. You see what I'm saying? But attachment in reverse, that is very clear, right? There had been something or someone or environments that kept you from being in this open receptive state. They keep saying confident as well. Now, moving into this will definitely trigger people around you who cannot do that yet, who are not ready to do that yet. And it's gonna be clear. It's gonna be painfully clear in a way, I almost feel like these people are seeing you as that appreciation card and they're stuck. And they're stuck and can't take action towards you. That's definitely gonna be the case for most of us. But again, if you're not in the open receptive state yet, it's up to you to get past your own blockages to do so. Uh, on that little cluster I just picked up, hold on. on this little set, Magician in the Mirror in Reverse. This is the Magician card. And here it is in reverse. Are you going to believe in yourself to make it happen or not? Are you gonna be the magician upright and make shit happen or not? This, it feels like doubt to me. To me, this feels like doubt and it feels like insecurity. Um, so again, some of you need to face that within yourself in order to free yourself, literally free yourself into the state. A lot of us, these people who are sitting here are gonna react to us being in this kind of a state and it's gonna be trigger city, okay? It's gonna be trigger city, it's gonna be disappointing, it's gonna be emotional for some overall hostilities the five of swords card thinking man in reverse oh god deceit in reverse it's just getting ugly isn't it and anxiety i'm gonna show you these again this is the overall energy hostilities the thinking man in reverse deceit in reverse and anxiety this to me feels like a whole lot of emotional reacting, ego reaction, anxiety, fear, 
restlessness, what's real, what's not, can I do this, can I not do this, doubt, insecurity, all of it, especially with thinking men in reverse, that's very clearly not like thinking straight, right? That's like, that's not really seeing seeing the reality of what is going on here and what's available to all of us. Because the reality is this experience of being open and receptive and free is available to all of us. But it's up for us to get out of our own way to do that. And if you do do that and people around you don't, it will be clear It'll probably trigger them. And for some of you, it might make them sad. It might make them scared. It might make them really freak out with hostilities. Hostilities is a freak out card. It's a freak out card. Okay. Um, I apologize for my energy, guys. I know I don't need to. I, and I think I'm just really in the energy of the week. I just feel very um, frustrated. I feel frustrated. I feel agitated very little patience and i feel very serious and i think that's just some of the energy we're moving into for the week but that's the collective spread let's go ahead and get into the elements here okay oh air fire earth or water who's going first earth okay well, let me just roll these up damn i'm sore <laughs> damn i'm sore all right earth as always we're going to start with the wild unknown animal tarot deck oracle deck links are below for your convenience earth it's funny because it's like earth is capricorn taurus virgo and i heard scorpio we do a lot of scorpio energy and it is scorpio season but earth you could be dealing with scorpio you could have scorpio in your chart capricorn taurus virgo Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo. Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo. Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo. Yeah, I just feel frustrated. Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo. Sorry. All right. Actually, let me put that on Do Not Disturb so that just doesn't keep happening. It's going to make me nuts. Okay. All right. Let's see what we have. Wow. Beautiful. Earth, deer, and butterfly. Uh, deer and butterfly coming out here is very much like the energy I was talking about here. It's confident, it's open, it's receptive. Both of these energies speak to being open. Deer is divine feminine principle in this deck. It also speaks to beauty and grace and sensuality. Butterfly is like a renewed energy. It's a very light energy, it also speaks of grace. Um, grace has been a theme coming up in the collective recently. So beautiful, beautiful energy coming up for my earth signs. Um, I feel a challenge. I feel a challenge of staying in this energy. Hold on to this energy. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. They're telling me stuff. Hold on. This is a week where if you haven't worked on your shit, if you have been, sorry, oh, I feel so irritated. Some of you have been holding on to a lot of shit. Um, oh, any of you who have resentment, resentment, unresolved anger, if you're actively fighting with someone, like, the shit's coming out. It's coming out. I, I just feel such a frustrated, like, just just no patience, no tolerance kind of an energy here. Um, but this is beautiful, Capricorn, Capricorn Taurus Virgo. This is beautiful energy, though. But I think they're wanting me to really harp on that, like, because it's like, <sighs> if there are people around you who haven't worked on their shit, they're not going to be able to meet you here. They're just not. They're just not. They're not going to be able to maintain that shit. Also, keep in mind, if you're in this energy, people might be lashing out at you because it is... Remember what I said about, like, the, the more chaotic it gets, the muddier it gets, the more light there will be. The more clarity there will be of spiritual calling, personal paths, personal missions, um, partnerships, real partnerships, real supportive partnerships. It will be blatantly obvious which means anything that is not that, 
four, 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 44, 44 on my camera. Anything that is not that will also be blatantly obvious, which means if you're bright, you're gonna be that much brighter this week, okay? Be triggering people left and right. Any other messages or insights from Earth signs, Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo? So activated right now. Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo. In strong wolf energy. Um, that could be an energy you've been working with. That could be an energy that comes up. Wolf is pack energy. It speaks to tribe. It speaks to community. Um, also speaks to student teacher because it's a wisdom animal. Um, let me tune into this wolf for a minute. It feels like an angry wolf. I want to say it's your wolf. Like, I want to say it's an aspect of self. <coughs> I want to, yeah, I want to say it's this aspect of self that is trying to get your attention to what you're angry about, what you're resentful about. It relates to community and pack. <coughs> mm. I just keep seeing an angry wolf. Any mess? And there it is. There's the shakeup, Buffalo. There's the shakeup. Buffalo is my tower card. Buffalo comes out when chaos ensues. Stir in the pot, storms a brewing, hurricanes a coming. But again, this theme of grace. This card speaks of grace. This card speaks of grace. This card speaks of grace. Buffalo is all about having grace while you flow through chaos and change and gross things like this. Keep that light, Earth, Earth signs. Keep that light and practice grace. I feel like people sometimes um, struggle with, with grace, the meaning of grace. Um, what, I, what I mean in terms of grace is like, if someone's like fighting with you, if someone's like losing their mind and losing their shit, right? It's like not being submissive, but also not like not stooping to that level of force, right? It's it's observing what's happening, not taking it personally, but also being able to still practice maturity and compassion, but not in a way where you're like a doormat, okay? That's grace. Taking it in stride and not letting it be personal, not letting it affect you, not by like suppressing it, not like, because I think that's something else that we struggle with in our society too. When we say, oh, I'm not letting that affect me. I think a lot of people just mean they're actually just suppressing their emotions. Remember mastery of emotions here. You're not suppressing shit. You're letting things flow. You're letting things be what they are, right? But you control how you react. You control the actions you take and what you say. And it can be from this place of calm. It can be from this place of confidence. It can be from a place of compassion of grace, right? Any other messages or insights from my earth signs? Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo. Beautiful. Hawk. When Hawk comes out, we're being spiritually pulled into a specific direction. Whatever the chaos cut comes up for you is, earth signs, whether it is a tower or again, just part of the disruptive, unex the unexpected shit that happens, again, it's happening for a reason. Some of you, it's happening so that things can fall into place. Some of you, it's happening so that things can get torn down so that you can move on to new avenues or new channels. Some of you, it's happening so you actually can deepen certain avenues and channels that you're already on or that you're already connected to. It's gonna be different for everybody, but all of them are happening for a reason and it is to put people where they need to go. Take people where they need, I heard take, take people where they need to go. This interesting vulture at the bottom. Let's see what other ones wanna come out. Hold on a second. Uh, okay. Yep, there it is, spiritual strength. Any other, I almost said any other emotions. Any other messages? <laughs> For my earth signs, Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo, Stingray, landing on the deer and the butterfly. Stingray is the king of cups energy. It is mastery of emotions. It is also spiritual strength. Grace. You're going to need that. You're going to need that when things get a cray cray. 
<laughs> when things get a cray cray, when people get a cray cray, don't lose yourself. Don't lose yourself. Don't lose your divinity. Don't lose your compassion. Don't lose your humanity either. On the bottom, we have Crow, the card of magic and, transform and transmutation, magician energy. Ooh. Whoa. Interesting. We have Crow, Moth, lizard and elk the elk is interesting because the first card out you had was the deer divine feminine divine masculine principle so some of you guys this is about a relationship um where someone is like very much like that compliment if you will but for most of you i'm, I'm gonna say it's not but just know that that's very possible for a lot of you and you probably already know who you are but crow with the moth this feels like a manifestation that feels like something has been created, you have created something, you have pulled something to you. And then we have lizard and elk, and it's like, it just, it, that, that feels overwhelming to me. The lizard card is my empath overload card, and then here we have elk with that masculine energy. Remember, being in that receptive open state and practicing spiritual strength is where you wanna stay, earth signs, no matter what chaos ensues because whatever the chaos is whatever the crazy is it is to help things fall into place and get people to where they need to be but in the midst of this earth signs you are clearly manifesting something you're either manifesting someone or an opportunity an avenue a channel if you will but there's something about it that feels very overwhelming and i think the overwhelm is tied into whatever the disruption is that's going to be happening for you so let's go ahead and get into some tarot cards here and see what we got Okay, glow in the dark tarot. Still haven't linked it, keep meaning to. You all know how that goes. Any messages or insights from my earth signs for this week? Capricorn. Virgo, Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo. I keep getting solar energy. I picked up on that earlier too. Um, might want to work on your solars or to be just, you know, be aware of your solars this week. Seven of Cups. <laughs> like I said, the oh my God, I can't pick these cards up. There we go. The chaos. The chaos, the overwhelm. Lizard energy. The chaos and overwhelm that can happen this week. There it is in the seventh form of the Seven of Cups on the Buffalo. Well, we knew that was coming. We knew that was coming. Don't let, don't let it, don't let it unhinge you. Don't let it unhinge you. It's just, all chaos is, is the process of order, right? You can't have order without chaos. You can't have chaos without order. That's all chaos is. It's the process of order, okay? That's how I see it anyway. Any messages or insights from my earth signs? Whoa, whoa, so whoa. I moved the camera. Hold on. Sorry, guys. Whoa. Star and Empress. I would definitely say that represents this energy. Literally, the divine feminine principle, being open, being receptive, recently having some sort of breakthrough, 
some sort of even like letting go or clearing or completion that is bringing you to the world card, remember? Bringing you to that state of open avenues and open channels. Empress and the star card, this is feeling pretty damn blessed. Feeling blessed, feeling on the right track. That's where you're starting. I keep getting that's the starting point of this week. You're, you're gonna start here and it's about holding on to that energy, okay? It's about holding on to that. Sorry, the cards keep like getting fiddled around. It's about holding on to that. Hold on to that. Hold on to that. Hold on to that. Hold on to that. Because this is happening outside of you. This is happening around you. About to happen around you. Any other messages or insights? Ooh. Okay, interesting. Four of Swords just landed on the Seven of Cups. I like this actually, because this to me feels like I'm gonna keep my distance from the chaos and, and observe it, witness it. Four of Swords is a reflective energy. It's an energy of recovery of I'm gonna remove myself so I can go chill, I can rest, I can sleep. That's Four of Swords. The fact that the Seven of Cups is there tells me that it's like, I see the chaos, I can feel the chaos. I can I can feel the overwhelm. I can see people's overwhelm. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna do this. <laughs> I'm gonna do this. Um, for some of you, your dream state may be even more confusing. That's also something I'm getting here. Almost like an overwhelming dream time kind of experience. Like maybe waking up feeling exhausted, and then got more confusion here. We have strength with the moon and the six of pentacles. There's a restraint happening here. An emotional restraint. Oh my God, I can't talk. Emotional restraint. <laughs> Emotional restraint is what I'm hearing. Why? Until, until it's clear. Okay. When this energy gets clear, there won't be a need to restrain. Th this literally feels like holding back feelings of wanting to be open or wanting to give, wanting to like be in the mix. That's what this is feeling like to me. Like, holding back emotions and feelings and desires of wanting to do those things. But especially if things do get a little confusing and things get a little chaotic, it may be kind of unclear as to who you want and can have that give and take with. Six of Pentacles is being in the mix with other people. It's not a solo card. It's a card of I help you, you help me. Olive branch, olive branch. I support you, support me. That's that kind of energy, but there's confusion and restraint around it, but I can feel a lot of feelings a lot of feelings of wanting to be open and giving and like and having a lot of exchange and, inter and yeah exchange wanting to have a lot of exchange but this could be making it not clear as to who to do that with or how to do that appropriately hold on to this <laughs> hold on to that earth signs hold on to that let's see what else wants to come out for my earth signs here Beautiful. Ace of Wands coming on the Empress. Be mindful of pregnancy. Sorry, I just got a call, call spade a spade. Be mindful of pregnancy here, just with the Empress and the Star card. And the Ace of Wands, that could totally be a little, a little blessing of a bun in the oven. If you don't want that, you know how to take precautions there. But Ace of Wands coming with the Empress and the Star card, I'm also not surprised because, again, it's like being in this very new, open, receptive, free state there's also, thank you, there's also an awareness of, of creative creative energy. There's an awareness of manifestation energy. The Empress with the Ace of Wands can create anything. Anything. It's basically like the magician. Because she is the fertile feminine Empress holding the very phallic masculine wand. She can create anything. She's got her seeds, basically. She's, she's got the equipment. <laughs> Put it that way. Um, very fertile. Very freaking fertile. Again, hold on to that. Just hold on to that. All right. Anything else for my earth signs? Whoa. Whoa. I, I knew there was another, like, I knew this was about a relationship for some of you. So. It's hard to pick up these cards today. We've got the Star card, Empress, Ace of Wands, and the Page of Swords. We've got someone watching, Earth Signs. They're watching you. 
They're watching you. I feel like you're also doing some observing, especially with that Four of Swords and Seven of Cups energy. And we also have the Ace of Swords on the other side of the Seven of Cups. So this is why, okay, so I'm liking this for your signs because you're in this like super fertile, ready to go energy. You ready to go, avenues open, channels open. You're, you're ready, you're ready, okay? That Seven of Cups energy, when shit gets a stir in, you go into the Four of Swords page of swords to get the ace of swords you see with the four of swords you got the three up there and he's like resting on the ace page of swords holding the ace this is you being so freaking ready but really wanting to be very clear on what you're going to do with your fertility basically fertility is just you're just primed and ready to do anything anything and everything you want to do but you don't want to misuse it you don't want to succumb to lower vibrational energies. You clearly just got over something or you clearly just let go of something big or some like a blockage just went poof, unblocked for you. And you've been waiting for that for a long time and it finally happened. Some of you it's about to happen. And when this like murky energy comes up, you're like, oh no, no, I'm gonna observe. I'm gonna observe this. I'm going to understand this. I'm going to figure this out so I can I can just make sure I'm really seeing things clearly, right? Some of you, someone is watching you, like someone's got their eyes on you. And that definitely to me feels romantic. Just got to call it like I see it. Um, and they're trying to figure out what to do about it. Moving on. Any other messages or insights? Ooh, any other messages or insights from my earth signs? Oh, man. So earth signs over here, this restraint. This restraint of the emotional urge to exchange with other people. We have the eight of swords, the ten of cups, and the ten of wands. There's fear. It's fear. Am I going to get the Ten of Cups or am I just going to feel burdened? Is it going to be the Ten of Cups or is it just going to be the Ten of Wands? This is what you want to be clear on. That's the muckiness you're trying to be clear on here, okay? So that you can stay in that star energy and that Empress Ace of Wands, like, yumminess here, okay? Uh, for those of you where there's somebody keeping an eye on you because they're interested and they don't know what to do, they don't know how to approach you, um, they're scared. <laughs> they're scared. They need to come out of their own garden in the gate to, to deal, to, to handle it. Cause you're, this is, this energy is clearly somebody who's beyond that fear. Right. Um, but like I said, if you're not dealing with another person or it's not about someone like having a thing for you, you just want to make sure you're making the right choice. And so take your time with this. It's like, don't be impulsive. You don't need to be impulsive. Gather information. Gather information, stay in that beautiful Empress energy. Don't let the Seven of Cups bog you down, lower your vibe, fuck with your head. Don't let it push you into the frequency of fear. Like take a pause and, and make sure that you utilize this energy properly. Overall, we have the Hanged Man, also indicating a need for pause. Ooh, Justice. Oh, Nine of Cups, interesting. Knight of Swords. A choice two of wands underneath that and then pages pages and then you got six of cups energy that feels like a talk again don't be impulsive here don't be impulsive um what brings the seven of cups i think is the knight of swords i think this knight of swords is bringing the seven of cups and it feels like pressure it does it feels like pressure it's like, earth sign, are you doing A or are you doing B? We doing this, you doing that. You have the nine here, and then there's eight of swords around the ten. Ten involves other people. Nine is the solo card. And what's between the nine and the ten? The ace of cups. This feels like pressure being applied here. And I think that's what causes some stirring. I think that's what causes a little bit of a stormy energy. And you're just like, hold up, wait a minute. Um... Hold up, wait a minute. Some of you, it's it's this own pressure within yourself to take action on something, to make a choice on something. 
And that pressure for some of you is actually something you want to do to another person. So let me let me back up and, and explain this, okay? So I'm getting three scenarios for a lot of you guys here. I'm getting a scenario where you know what you want, earth sign. You're ready, you're primed, you're ready to go. You're gathering information. You want to really understand um, how to utilize this energy, this new energy properly, okay? And all the while you're feeling this pressure to act. You're feeling this pressure to act. You're feeling this pressure to get other people involved potentially or to exchange with others, but you're restraining yourself because you wanna make sure you're moving towards the 10 of cups and not the 10 of wands. You wanna be very clear about that. Now that pressure, right, to like get this going, that's the pressure that you're putting on yourself. Some of you, that's a pressure that you actually are feeling like, is this person I'm friends with? Is this person I'm working with? Is this person I live with? Is this person I'm in a romantic relationship with? Are they on this track or not? Are they with me or not? And you might feel this pressure to ask them or to, or to right, pressure, pressure, pressure them. And I'm not saying you're trying to like pressure them. I know I'm using the word pressure a lot, just it's pressure, I can feel it, it's tension. Um, but it's pressure you're feeling internally and you're trying to like temper it while you get very clear and make sure you're gathering all the information on how to go about this properly, okay? And the third option is an external energy that's struggling with all of this and observing you and wanting to approach you and pressure you and ask you. Either way, hanged man. Don't be impulsive with this. Don't be impulsive with these feelings. Don't be impulsive with these desires. Hold on to your Empress Star energy whether you're dealing with an external person or just yourself. And it'll become clear if you're heading towards Ten of Cups or Ten of Wands, because it's gonna be based off of your actions, your intentions, and the people you involve yourself with and or person. Again, why you're restraining that deep desire to go and get in the mix with things here, okay? Wow, all right, let's move on. I've been doing your reading for a bit now. Moving on, good luck, our signs. Mm. I want a hot tub. <laughs> I want to sit in a hot tub. It sounds so nice right now. All right. Air, water, or fire. Air. Water. Water, I'm feeling water, okay. All right, water signs. Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces. I'm excited but nervous to do your reading. <laughs> excited but nervous. Ah, let's get into the animals. Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces. You know what? Let me take some of my crystals off. I'm wondering if that's affecting me. I'm going to take you off. I'm going to take you off. Let's see if that changes anything. Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces. I'm feeling a soft energy around these water signs. It almost has the energy of the lamb. We don't have any cards out yet, but it kind of has the energy of the lamb, like new, soft, almost not fragile, but kind of like, like a baby, like that's baby energy, right? I'm not saying you're a baby, but you know what I mean? Um, gentle. I feel like you're in a gentle state, water signs, or you're, you're needing to be like TLC'd. Cancer Pisces Scorpio. No. Cancer Pisces Scorpio. I'm also oh I'm getting a masculine energy. Hold on. This could be your own energy. It could be someone you're dealing with, but yeah, I just got um a very empathetic, a lot of empathy. A lot of empathy. I almost want to say extreme empathy. Whoever this is, again, this could be you. Um, very, very sensitive, and I mean like energetically sensitive to other people's emotions and they could be feeling you. 
I, I just, I feel, and it feels masculine. It feels actually masculine. I feel like they just want to like wrap you in love, honestly. That's what it feels like to me. And again, you could be feeling this about another person or just generally like feeling people a little bit more than you're used to and just wanting to like hug people, hold people through their sensitivities is how it wants to come through, through their sensitivities. I, but again, I take it as it resonates, but it's like I'm getting that and I'm also getting how much you need TLC. You need comfort. You need compassion. You need love. Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. I, ca I can't get away from this feeling water sign. Someone senses this. Someone or someone is sensing this about you or you're sensing this about another person. Um sensing how much someone needs love and compassion and like a hug. Ooh, we got zebra. Not what I expected. This is an interesting energy. It's very Geminian. Um, I just got kind of like a like, like an intellectual, which is not normally the zebra. The zebra is kind of like an artist. The zebra is kind of like an eclectic energy, but it's also an energy about being your authentic self. All of your, all of who you are, every single stripe, dot, color, of you, of the rainbow of you, that is zebra energy, but I'm getting a very, a very intellectual person, almost like a king of swords, which is weird because that's not what I would see for a zebra, but they could have an artistic side to themselves, but I'm seeing somebody who's a king of swords. Gotta be honest with what I get water signs. I feel like this is somebody outside of you, okay? I feel like this is someone in your, in your field. Um, in your field, you're in their awareness is how, okay, this is just very specific. You're in their awareness. You're in their awareness. Tell me about the zebra. I keep, yeah, I keep hearing intellectual, 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 intellectual. They're very smart. They're very smart, whoever this is, water signs. And if it's reversed or vice versa, then, you know, go about and do that. Okay, go about and do that. Tell me about the zebra. Mmm. Ooh. Deer came out again. So for those who are using the timestamps, uh, Earth sign also had deer. Zebra, turtle, and deer. Turtle is a very, pa I'm getting patient actually. I'm hearing the word patience. Turtle to me is elders, grandmother energy. It's about pacing and going with the, the flow of energy, right? Being grounded and how you're flowing. Deer is divine feminine principle. I feel like the zebra is watching the deer. Um, got a lot of watching going on this week, apparently, for everybody. The, yeah, I feel like the zebra feels the deer. Yeah, I can't get away from it. The zebra feels the deer. It's just how it wants to come through. Water signs, you're the deer. Zebra feels you. This zebra feels you. They feel you. They sense you. Whether you're they're in your physical environment or not, they could also have a lot of water in their own chart. They're just very, very sensitive psychically sensitive and empathetic they're an empath they're a very strong empath they sense you they feel you now the other card that came out frog emotional cleansing emotional purification i feel like this is your energy water signs that like that purified energy that i was picking up on initially soft soft gentle like this to me feels like even going through some sort of yeah, emotional purge or clearing or removing emotional blockages. Um, like that's how it feels. I keep seeing white. They keep saying like showing me the color white. Um, yeah, cleanse, purify, but it feels very emotional. But I also feel like it's leaving you in a very soft place. Deer is also very soft as well. Deer is also very soft. But whoever the zebra is, they feel you, they sense you. They feel you, they sense you. Any other messages or insights from my water signs? Um, this could be a guide of yours. I don't think so. Just being honest. It could be. <laughs> this is a general reading. I feel like it's a physical person. Intuitively, it feels like a physical person to me. And you're in their awareness. Your energy is in their field for whatever reason or another. And they're just feeling you and they're sensing you. Probably even thinking about you. Um, but it could be someone who does share your physical environment. But anyway, let's move on. Any other messages or insights from my water signs? Hmm. 
this person might not be able to tolerate feeling you so much water signs because there's about to be some talk to talk. We got Nightingale and Swan. You could have very strong telepathy with this person, um, especially with Swan being here and just the nature of what I've already been picking up on. Swan is like counterpart energy, like mirrored souls energy. Um, it also speaks to the energy of feeling whole and complete within the self. Nightingale is throat chakra energy, conversations, right? Speaking up and speaking out. Water signs. I do feel like whatever this emotional cleansing is, it is putting you like kind of what we channel for the collective, right? Into the state of being open being so, I just keep getting soft, so open, so receptive, so soft. And I do think in this cleansing and this purifying, it is probably also helping you to be more expressive as well, like be more authentically expressive about your feelings um, and to be more yourself and be more self-loving as well. So I can see that process going on with you. I can feel that process going on with you. But at the same time, most of you, I want to say most of you, it just is such a big energy that I can't get off of. Got this zebra king of swords energy that's very aware of you. And I feel like you're you're te telepathically communicating a lot. Um, and I think, yeah, it feels more like telepathy than anything else, but there could be a very like tangible conversation coming. Let's see what else wants to come out here. And then we'll move on to tarot. Anything else for my water signs this week? Wow. Yeah. Water sign, whoever this is, you got a very, very strong connection to them. Like very strong. We got whale landing on that. Whale is like Pisces energy. It's like the card of great mystery. It's the card of spirit. It's the card of interconnectedness from the soul, like connecting through realms and time and space. Like that's that's what this person is. That's this connection you have with this person. We've got another cluster out here too. We've got dragon, um, gazelle, starfish, and sea serpent, solar plexus, and sacral um, going on here. There, this to me feels like pure attraction. <laughs> to be honest, that's what I'm getting. Starfish is like the star card. It's this like undeniable attractive captivating mesmerized energy sea serpent is the sacral chakra creative expression sensual sexual energy where we do create things bring things to life um dragon is solar plexus energy it's also masculine energy as well it's being able to see through the veil see through the ego um that strong solar energy like i mentioned too and then gazelle is an observing energy gazelle is i'm gonna sit here and i'm gonna observe until i can take action or until my instincts tell me to jump. This to me feels like being very aware of a connection or an, or an, a magnetic attractive force and just observing it. I can't. So Scorpios, Scorpios. <laughs> well, again, Scorpio season. Water signs. You all know me. I don't do love reading specifically. This feels like an undeniable connection. It is so strong, it can't stop like screaming at me, at you. It's, it's, it's disorienting me, to be honest with you. Overall, we have Panther, interesting, with Snake, ooh, and then the Lion. Lion is my King of Wands energy. There's a lot of sexual energy here, water signs. It's a lot of sexual energy. Panther coming out is catharsis. It's release, which we already knew was happening with the frog, right? The snake with the lion, I, it feels a little kundalini-like to me because it feels like fire and it just feels like, whoa. Um, the snake card specifically is about tapping into untapped energy, untapped potential. Again, very similar to earth signs and very similar to the collective read, which again, we're all part of the collective, right? It feels like you ha are moving through some sort of serious blockage and it feels emotional for a lot of you. I think it's also connected to your solar or your sacral and it's moving you into the state of being able to be tuned into that part of you more, to be more expressive, more authentically expressive. But I also feel in turn, like as that's happening, someone's very aware of you. Someone's very aware of your process and it's like they are so tuned into you. It's insane. I'd be shocked if you didn't know this person or weren't aware of them in some way, shape, or form. Because it's just so, like, in the face. 
And what I'm getting off this energy is like, they, I just keep hearing intellectual, like intellectual king of swords and very, very, very strong empath. Let's go ahead and get into some tarot cards here. Page of swords and two of cups. Just saying. Any messages or insights from my water signs? Mm. Any messages or insights from my water signs regarding the spread? Man, that two of cups is not letting up. We got they're showing two cups and ace of cups right here. Water signs. All right, tell them crazy, crazy read. Okay. Any messages or insights from my water signs? Eight of Wands. Look what's still at the bottom. Two of Cups. Eight of Wands also landing on the whale, by the way, and that whole little cluster of like the nightingale and the swan, the zebra and the deer. Um, Eight of Wands is usually unstoppable movement or action. It also can speak to communication and dating. It's also my one of my downloads cards. Um, again, I feel like your telepathy of this person is kind of crazy. Tell me about the Eight of Wands. Ooh. So I wanted to know about the Eight of Wands. They wanted to talk about other things. <laughs> so, hold on. Sorry to pick up cards today. Uh, so focusing on this cluster... Um, the dragon, the uh, sorry, getting other things, dragon, gazelle, starfish, and uh, the sea serpent. Well, I do feel like this is about seeing this connection and like the undeniable magnetism and connection there. Um, I feel like this is also a very deep clarity on what you want. Clarifying this, we have the queen of pentacles and the queen of cups. Again, the zebra energy is watching you. They're very aware of you, very aware of your process, and they're seeing you as a queen of cups and a queen of pentacles. That water earthy, this feels like total mama yumminess energy. This is totally the deer. It's ve that's very much like feminine energy, almost at its best, is what I want to say, because both of these queens are incredibly nurturing. Out of all four queens, these are the only two that actually are described as nurturing emotionally and practically and they're both the mama queens right because queen of swords is like the solo queen the single queen the widowed queen the queen of wands is kind of like the single queen you know does battle by herself these two are the only ones that speak to that kind of strong mother energy they see you as very nurturing you're also in your process of clearing and and purging and opening up expressively and all of that um again getting very clear on what you want and what you want to nurture is also very clear there too two of cups is just hanging out oh i need a sip okay any other messages or insights from my water signs <sighs> wow Clarifying further on the Queen of Pentacles and the Queen of Cups, we have the Six of Swords and the Star card. Heading towards wish fulfillment, heading towards happiness, heading towards healing. This is what you're focusing on, water signs, but it's also what this person is, is watching you do. I, I just keep getting this person is so aware of you, they're so in tune with you, and they're just watching you, watching your process. Again, they see you as very nurturing. Now, are you a wish fulfillment for this person? Potentially for some of you, but it's not about that. It's just about them being aware of you doing this. Okay. Ooh. Ooh. Oh. Well, three cards came out. One's a five and one's a ten. And not the good kind. Oh, I, oh, that feels like tearing up in the gut. We have Ten of Swords, Strength, and the Five of Swords. I feel like this is part of what you're clearing, Water Signs. I, keep, I It literally feels like a tear to the gut or like a gut punch. Um, major like 
tear of the ego. I keep on getting words like tear and rift and like like stab. Like I'm getting words like that. Um, yeah, this is something I feel like you're clearing and purging. It just feels so much ego here. I feel so much ego. I feel so much pain. I feel so much ego and I feel so much pain. That's like, that's all I feel off of these cards. Betrayal. Betrayal. This is energy you're purging. That's all they really want me to say about it. This is just energy you're purging. It's pain and it's ego and it's betrayal. Probably been carrying it around for years. <laughs> right? Probably been carrying it around for years. Any other messages or insights from my water signs? Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. Let's see here. Ooh. My oh my. They finally wanted to come back to the Eight of Wands. Eight of Wands, Hierophant, and the Fool. This feels very new. Hold on a second. This is a new path, a new direction. Um, water signs. It feels like in purging this, right? You're getting very clear in what you want to nurture. What you want to nurture, what's going to make you happy, what destiny you're going to create for yourself, what destiny you're following for yourself. We're in eclipse season. This is like, this is big energies, right? It's like, this is the kind of big shit that happens during eclipse season. And this is where you end up with the eight of wands, the Hierophant, and the fool. I feel like whoever this person is, they're, again, they're aware of your process. And some of you are getting closer to them is what I want to say. Because um, this is also part of that tele telepathy telepathy that I'm getting. But I feel like the fool, there is a new door, a new path open to you, and you're taking it. You're totally taking it. And I, I just can't help this feeling too of like this person, are they influencing that choice? I just keep get, I keep getting, you're getting closer to them. Now, because you've also gone through a healing and a clearing, it could also be that you're just getting even more in tune with your own divinity. And as you get more in tune with your own divinity, telepathy also gets stronger and you could technically energetically become closer with someone that you have strong telepathy with in that way on a telepathic level. Doesn't mean you have to meet them on your path. Um, but yeah, there's something about this where it almost feels like you're closer to spirit, you're closer to God, and in doing so, you're also closer to anybody you have those kind of deep soul connections with. Um, some of you, if this person is talking to you in the physical, which if they are, you would already know, it, this feels like this feels like wanting to take a leap closer to them to share in that divinity with them. Let's see what else wants to come out for you. I I, I keep feeling this is a very like non-physical kind of connection though i can't get away from that feeling like something about them feels very physically far is how i want to say any other messages or insights my water signs cancer pisces scorpio let's see here Ah, oh, water signs. It's interesting we have the Hierophant and the High Priestess. The Hierophant is the High Priest for me in tarot, the High Priest to the High Priestess. Um, but we... It's the neighbors, sorry. <laughs> okay, I was waiting for them to come down. We have Six of Pentacles, the Hierophant, and the Ten of Cups. Again, you're, you are very focused on what you want to nurture, what your wish fulfillment is, what's going to bring you happiness, especially now that you have like this new avenue open, this new path open after clearing a serious blockage, I want to say, a, like a lot of pain, a very serious blockage. But the Six of Pentacles, you don't want to do it alone. This is, this is not about you riding solo. Even though I don't feel like you're physically close to this other energy, Six of Pentacles has been coming up for a lot, a lot of people lately. Six of Pentacles, again, is like this give and take with other people. I give to you, you give to me. I share with you, you share with me. It's reciprocal. It's equal, right? And there you are as the high priestess sitting there tuning <laughs> tuning into what you want to do, what you want to nurture. And again, you your, your eye on the prize is the star card and the ten of cups. Again, I keep getting this person's very aware of you and very aware that this is what you're doing and this is what you want. But this is clear to me that what you want is to have other people a part of your path 
in that way where you can share with them emotionally and spiritually. Overall, we have the Queen of Swords and the King of Swords. I knew that, I knew I felt that King of Swords energy. I knew it, I knew it. Interesting. And then we have King of Wands, Three of Wands, that gazelle energy. A lot of watching going on here. Oh, let me sit with this. This person's just what? Yeah, Scorp water signs. <laughs> Sorry, I keep saying Scorpio. I think because there's just so much Scorpio energy. Yeah, water signs. I feel like this energy, this person, they're just sitting and watching. They're sitting and observing, sitting and desiring. There's something about that that's kind of nice, though, because it's like you're on your journey, you're on your path, you're doing your thing, and it's like they're just kind of admiring you. That's how it feels to me. They're just kind of admiring you. If you were not aware of this person before, you're about to be. Thank you. That's why it all feels so weird. Yeah, if you were not aware of this person, you're about to be aware of them. You're about to be aware of them. Um, and very similar to earth signs and very similar to the collective, you have your own process to deal with. This is a massive purge of some like serious, painful emotions. And after you do that, you are going to take time in this receptive state. Almost all the queens. We have queen of swords, queen of pentacles, queen of cups, and the high priestess. That's very much a, I'm going to sit here and I'm going to gather information. I'm going to sit here and intuit. Um like how to move forward and which way I want to move forward now that I've cleared this and I have all this space open what my wish fulfillment is which for you is ten of cups and six of pentacles it's the exchange of others it's the give and take with other people and you want to head towards that you want to head towards that but you're going to take time to figure that out on how that looks for you and all the while you just you got some sort of admirer just kind of hanging out okay water signs all right let's move on My head is definitely starting to feel better though, which is good. But I like, I just like want to lay down and close my eyes so bad. All right. Air or fire? Air or fire? We're going with air. Fire signs, you're going last. Okay. Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. Gemini, ooh, uh, Libra, Aquarius. What's going on with my air signs? Getting beachy energy. Getting beach. Beach. Are you spending time at the beach? You want to spend time at the beach, air signs? You want to spend time in water, near water? Something about the ocean specifically with you. Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. Some mischievous energy too with you. Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. Yeah, I keep getting like, <laughs> you know that. Like foxy, foxy, squirrel, coyote, <laughs> kind of energy. Oh, okay. Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. What's going on for my air signs? Oh, oh. <laughs> Is that why you need to go to the beach? Do you need to contemplate the waves? Do you need to contemplate existence? Are you having an existential crisis? Almost an egg, eagle, eagle and earthworm. This feels like being shoved into a new cycle. Like literally, it feels like you're standing on a platform and there's one being presented to you and you're like, no, thank you. And then suddenly the one you're standing on like just collapses and you have to jump to the next one. Like that's what this feels like. It, 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 yeah, that's what this feels like to me. <laughs> earthworm is zero point but it's discomfort too it's like it's feeling very foreign like 
feeling like you're in a very foreign environment or situation and it just feels uncomfortable because it's so different or so new. Eagle is like the world card in this deck. It speaks to uh, new cycles opening and closing. It also speaks to the mastery of air and fire, actually. Knowing when to act, knowing when to jump being able to discern. Yeah, the uh, I can't get away from the platform feeling. It feels like you're on a platform and you were forced to jump into the next platform because the one you were on fell below you. That's how that feels. Okay. Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. Do you feel like the universe is playing tricks on you? Gemini, Libra, Aquarius overwhelmed lizard empath overload card oversensitive when that card comes out for me that's a stress card all right so you're a little stressed you're a little stressed and you're a little overwhelmed any other messages or insights from my air signs nervous thank you that's also nervous i'm getting nervous energy it's weird it's like anxiety but it almost hurts it's like Ugh, it's almost like my solar went like, uh, like, like, uh, like my stomach's turning, like nauseous and almost painful. Anything else? My air signs, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. Am I taking these? No. Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. Bat. Can you see your way through the muddiness? Can you see your way through the dark? Can you see your way through this big, big change? It literally feels like change was thrust upon you and you didn't have a choice. It just, it just happened. It just happened. It just happened. And this is you trying to deal with the change. Oh, that noise. Any other messages or insights from my air signs? Oh, my head's starting to hurt again. Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. Interesting two cards to come out. Now we have Peacock and Wolf. Peacock in this deck is supposed to speak of beauty. Um, how beautiful something is, how beautiful the plumage of the peacock's feathers are. Um, I always get a bit of a masking, distracting energy with the peacock. And then we get wolf, which is a pack energy, community energy, community energy, tribal energy also speaks to what role you're playing in a certain group or community or family, right? Um, it's also a wisdom energy. But the fact that we have peacock here, there's something uh, I like, feels like whatever this change is. I don't even want to say it's changing the dynamic of a group or a family. It's not about that. It's like, it's making you see your role in a group or a group specifically differently. I just keep getting it stressing you out. It's almost like you're paralyzed. Yeah, thank you. It's a, it's a sense of paralysis, like shock. Whatever this change is, however you were shoved into this, there's something shocking about it. There's something paralyzing about it. And in doing so for you, it's like, of course, when it comes to whatever groups you're a part of or families you're a part of, it's just like, you're you're just seeing, seeing things differently. Yeah, you're kind of paralyzed. Overall, we have Buffalo, the tower card. Buffalo also speaks to like getting through towers and changes and chaos with grace. Right now you're paralyzed, but that's okay. Underneath that, we do have cosmic A, crown chakra, reaching a peak of spiritual development and growth. Not surprising because earthworm to me is kind of like the full card and the equals kind of like the world card. And then you basically have pinnacle of spiritual growth along with a tower. Like, it makes sense. It makes sense. Again, this feels like a big shove and it feels abrupt. It feels fast and it feels startling. Some of you, this could actually be in the form of a spiritual awakening. You would know how that applies to you or someone you're dealing with. Let's go ahead and pull some cards here. Any messages or insights to my air signs? Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. Ooh, Nine of Swords, Five of Swords. Any messages or insights from my air signs? Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. 
Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, one more. Okay. Play my eagle and earthworm for my air signs. Interesting. King of Pentacles in reverse, no less. King of Pentacles in reverse is an ungrounded energy. It's somebody who's way, who's more worried about money and materials. They're not prioritizing things right. It's like they're they're thrown out of their alignment. It's somebody, yeah, it's like that's what I'm getting with this King of Pentacles in reverse. It can also speak to insecurity. You just don't feel very good about the the I just said platform. The platform you were just shoved onto is very uncomfortable for you. I'm getting, I am getting worries about money with that actually. I am getting worries about money. I feel like this shove is actually forcing you to face any fears you have around money or scarcity mindset. I, 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 I to be honest, I just keep getting inappropriate relationship with material plane is what I'm getting. Um, you could have an unhealthy relationship with money or work. That's going to be made clear to you or your own vessel. Interesting that that came up that way. Your own vessel. Tell me more about eagle and earthworm. Whoa. Hold on. Got a card on the floor here. Ooh. Oh, no. Five of Cups. The Empress. Damn. In being shoved onto this platform, Air Signs, some of you could have actually suffered a loss. Um, it could have been a loss of a relationship between an Empress and the King of Pentacles in reverse. Some of you could have been a financial hit. Okay. Some of you could have been losing a mother figure or a wifey or a hubby or something of that nature. But some of you, I, I am actually getting, it's almost like you think you've lost your abundance or you think you've lost money or you think you've lost some sense of stability. It's almost like you're grieving the good times or you're grieving when things felt good or okay or stable. That's how it feels to jump on this next platform. Now, how true those things are versus how you're perceiving them and, and thinking about them and the story you're telling yourself, that's a whole other thing, right? But five of cups, you can't lie. That's grief. That's grief over loss, something that really mattered to you or someone that really mattered to you. And it feels like what you lost is the empress. Now, again, it could be about empress status or an empress person. For a lot of you, I keep getting money and stability. Tell me about lizard bat. Tell me about lizard and bat for my air signs. Again, I keep getting this shove is to force you to face these unhealthy relationships with how you see success, how you see money, how you see materials, things like that. Interesting. We've got Eight of Wands. So while I was focusing on Lizard and Bat, it wanted to keep talking about this. Um, Eight of Wands landing on on all of this. Whatever this like shove is, like this new platform you're finding yourself on, this new path, this new avenue, this new situation, something's moving pretty fast. Okay, you're again. All of this feels like it happened very quick and abrupt, but the train is not losing steam. Is kind of what I want to say. Tell me about the Eight of Wands. Oh, Jesus. Sorry. Hold on a second. <laughs> ah. right. Tell me about the Eight of Wands. Can I get a card for the Eight of Wands from my air signs? We have Knight of Cups and the Nine of Pentacles. The loss is not gonna, <laughs> sorry, I'm like all distracted. Um, that Five of Cups energy, that energy of loss here, I wouldn't stay stuck in that too long. I wouldn't stay stuck in that because it's like you're being fast-tracked here to stability. <laughs> Like, so it's almost like you can cry over spilt milk, but the milkman's coming. Like, you know what I mean? It's like, 
like I know you're sad you didn't get that chocolate cake, but the chocolate cake in the oven's almost done. Like you know what I mean? It's like you're grieving this idea of loss of of like a financial thing or a sense of stability or a sense of abundance or maybe even a relationship, right? But then look, Eight of Wands, that's the track that I feel like they're putting you on the speed of it. Knight of Cups and the Nine of Pentacles. Nine of Pentacles is very stable. Having all the resources you could ever want for yourself. It's also a confident energy. It's also a single energy. But the Knight of Cups right in the middle of that, it's like that could be somebody who's helping you on this path or helping you to reach that Nine of Pentacles state. I just feel like it's not just yourself at this point. I just feel like you are being fast-tracked, okay? You are the Empress. And you have this you have this mindset of a king of pentacles in reverse and you're about to be the nine of pentacles dealing with the knight of cups you understand what i'm saying it's like if, if you were in a relationship and suddenly you're not it's like you're not gonna be single for long like that's like that's the feeling I'm, I'm getting here right it's like if you had a job and you were making good money and suddenly you lost that job or you couldn't work it's like don't worry because like money's coming back anyway in some way shape or form and maybe it's coming in the form of help like you had to jump the platform, but this platform is going to put you right back on your feet in no time and you don't even realize it. So don't sulk for too long is what I want to say. Any other messages or insights from my air signs? Any other messages or insights from my air signs? Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. Any other messages or insights from my air signs? There's something about tribe, though. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. There's something weird going on with tribe in your life around this, around all of this stuff. And it feels sneaky. I don't know. I don't like it. We have high priestess, queen of wands. Ten of Pentacles and the Ace of Wands. Again, you're really worried about your stability. You're really worried about your security. Some of you, this is again about like relationships falling apart or coming into your life as well. But most of you, I can feel it's finances, material related, if anything. Um, that Queen of Wands energy. Okay, this is your energy. Okay, thank you. This is your energy. You want what you want. You want long-term stability. You want to make it happen. And here you are as the high priestess, you're, you're, you're sitting with these feelings while you're also dealing with that five of cups, while you're also dealing with grief and loss. So in this space of sitting with these feelings, sitting with these desires, right, of wanting to have it all, that's what it feels like. Like, I want to have it all. Nothing wrong with wanting to have it all, but you're also sitting there kind of silently. I keep, can't get away from this feeling of community. I, I want to know about this pack energy. You're sitting here as well. Sorry, I'm getting irritated again all of a sudden. Um, you're sitting here also because you are somewhat paralyzed a little. You're still kind of in shock from whatever this shove was onto this platform. Again, it feels like an abrupt, abrupt tower, abrupt event. Any other messages or insights my air signs? Okay. Tell me about this pack energy. I'm getting indecision around the pack energy. Okay. Did you guys hear that? My body is like responding to all this energy like crazy. Am I taking this too? Yeah. Yuck. All right. So I wanted to focus on this pack energy for you that I was feeling around the peacock and the wolf. We have two of wands, page of pentacles, seven of wands and then we get the ten of swords and the moon as you go through this huge abrupt shove on this new platform again you suffer some sort of loss perceived loss because you're clearly perceiving it whether it's actually happening or it's a story you're telling yourself of suffering that's up to you um again i wouldn't sulk too long because that shove was actually supposed to fast track you to abundance to stability to having imp imp like a pr improving your foundation okay it, that's that's what this shove was it was 
to fast track you. You're a little paralyzed, still understanding that you kind of want it all. Still kind of paralyzed though. And then at the same time, you got this weird community energy going on. Friend or foes? Are these friends or are they foes? Two of Wands tells me that you're, again, still kind of paralyzed in like navigating these changes that you're going through. But in trying to navigate these changes and trying to like, you know, get your footing, you've got the Page of Pentacles, the Seven of Wands, the Ten of Swords, and the Moon. Ten of Swords and the Moon can honestly lean towards like feeling mentally unstable, like feeling really depressed um a little paranoid right it's like it can lean into that it's like where your pain like takes on a whole new level of and a whole new emotional level i'll say it that way um this is you not wanting to experience anything like shocking again you don't want to experience anything uncomfortable because like, i feel like you're just shocked i just can't get away from this feeling of shock you are shocked from what has happened. You are shocked from being shoved onto this new platform in your life, this new path. You're trying to get a sense of footing. You're you're grieving. You're you're feeling upset. And when it comes to the people around you, you don't know if you can trust them. That's what it's coming down to. You just don't know if you can trust them. Overall, we have Page of Swords, Nine of Swords. Interesting. Six of Swords. Yeah. And then Ace of Pentacles. Again, still coming back to the focus on pentacles. Your focus, your main focus is clearly your, their, your pentacle life. <laughs> Money, security, job, that sort of deal. And you want it all as well how it keeps coming through. Again, this shove, this abrupt change was meant to fast track you. But in doing so, you're a little shocked as to how things have played out. You're just feeling a little overwhelmed. But when it comes to the people around you, all of a sudden you're like, I don't know if I could trust people. Page of Swords and the Nine of Swords, that's fear. Fear of what you're seeing, fear of what the truth may be. But Six of Swords and the Ace of Pentacles, you still want to get back to focusing on your pentacles. Um, so it's kind of going in circles now, air signs. And maybe this is why you need to go to the beach and ground and kind of just look at the waves and the water and just like ground and chillax. Because suddenly you're looking at people and you're just like, I can't trust anything. I think you just need to get grounded. I just, I feel like I'm looking at cards for somebody who's very overwhelmed and who's really worried about their money, who's really worried about being okay. So if you're that worried about being okay, just take a day and woosah, <laughs> come back to center, come back to self, come back to trust, come back to faith, and then take baby steps. But I, I, I would not allow yourself to get too paranoid about people around you right now, okay? Because like I said, this week is going to have some confusing elements. All right. Let's move on. So these are weird readings this week. Fire. I just want to tune in before I do the timestamp. Show me a bear. Okay. All right, fire signs. They're showing me a big, big bear. <laughs> you and bear energy. Someone around you and bear energy. It's a feeling of wanting to protect what's yours, protect what matters to you. That's what I'm getting. Yeah, you're feeling the need to go into protection mode for some reason. This could be you just trying to protect yourself, guard yourself from people. Aries, Leo, Sag. Aries, Leo, Sag. Aries, Leo, Sag. Aries, Leo, Sag. My crown is killing me now again. Yeah, this feels like protection. It does. It feels like protection. Okay. 
Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. Any messages or insights for this week for Aries, Leo, Sagittarius? Strength. Stingray. This is emotional strength. Spiritual strength. Fire signs. Yeah, it's, yeah. I mean, it's, it's gonna, it's a very clear message so far. This week, you're gonna need to call in a lot of strength. <clears throat> a lot of strength. Um, standing up for yourself, standing up for what matters to you, standing up for people who matter to you. But whatever you're standing up against or whoever you're standing up against, it almost feels like a personal challenge. Like, how do I want to say this? Like Superman and Kryptonite. Not that like they're Kryptonite to you or the thing you're standing up against is Kryptonite. It's like, I feel like whatever it is, whoever it is, there's personal ties there and personal triggers there. Personal trauma there is what it feels like or it reminds you of this, of personal trauma. Any messages or insights, which is why it's like a challenge. It almost has that, it sounds so dramatic, but it kind of has that feeling of hero story, right? It's like heroes face their biggest fears. Yep, there's the overwhelm with the lizard card. This is going to be a little hard fire signs. Practice that strength. Practice that strength in face of your fears, in face of what is your biggest boogeyman, in face of your biggest threat, in face of what really aggravates your nervous system, triggers you. Any messages or insights from my fire signs? Aries, Leo, Sag. Also hearing live your best life. Interesting. Some of you are going to have to confront someone potentially that struggles with you living your best life. As I say that, horse and bee. The, I'm hearing nectar. It's interesting. Hearing nectar, land of milk and honey is what I'm hearing with this too. Um, horse is like the ultimate multitasker. Sorry, just a little bit of pain. Horse is like the ultimate multitasker. She's like my queen of cups, queen of pentacles, a little bit of high priestess, empressy kind of energy. She's also the, she, he is also the master of earth and makes it all look easy, but it is being able to handle the earthly realm and not be overwhelmed by it and just get it done, get it done with beauty, get it done with grace and make it look easy. Uh, B, B speaks to a lot of work and a lot of effort. I feel like that's where your focus should be being the horse and the bee focus on this so this feels good this feels productive this feels like this is actually working you towards something or you're going to be gaining something from this energy this could be a purely like a work energy or like a project energy but this feels like devoting yourself to oh, i don't want to say this to life honestly to your best life yeah that's how it feels that's how it feels devoting yourself to your best life no matter how much work it requires of you no matter how hard it is to do that and don't get distracted by people who don't want you to do that don't get distracted by situations that want to get in your way of this have strength have strength and have faith and if if someone does and you got to stand up to them do it because it's your life. Tiger, as I said, that card of empowerment. This is also a card of spiritual awakening. She's She, he is fierce. I keep saying she, which is interesting. Um, the tiger is my queen of wands card as well. It is passion, sensuality, ferocity, but it is, it is also that card of spiritual awakening as well, but it's power. It's power. Fire signs, you got to stand up for what matters to you and what you're working for. So I know I'm, I know I keep saying this different ways. I can't find like specifically the exact words that are perfect to like describe what I'm feeling. But honestly, what it's coming down to fire signs. What matters to you and living your best life, what you are devoting yourself to and living your best life, including any relationships that are part of that, any projects that are part of that any endeavors that are part of that, whatever, right? Lifestyle choices that are part of that, keep doing it because it gives you a sense of empowerment because it is you living your best life. I just keep getting this like, this is like a week of facing people and circumstances that don't want you to, that are getting in the way of you doing this. 
and it's a little triggering, it's a little scary, and it's a little overwhelming, but you can handle it if you have that strength and faith. Any other messages or insights for my fire signs? Aries, Leo, Sag. Getting the stare down. Cobra. Cobra in this deck is like a teaching energy. Quickly, the Cobra is actually becoming my Saturn card. Co snakes are not specifically associated with Saturn, but it's like, this card in particular, particular, excuse me, I always get a Saturnian energy of like pressure and stare down. And are you going to rise to the occasion? Are you going to do it? Are you going to learn? Are you going to learn? Are you going to learn? And are you going to rise to the occasion? It feels like a dare. For some of you, you could be dealing with a Cobra-like energy or person, like somebody who may be older than you or has more life experience or someone who sees themselves as above you in some way, shape, or form, and like you need to stand up to them. Um, it's very interesting. Yeah, and you need to stand up to them so you could live your best life. Some of you, this is purely about facing your fear, so take it as it resonates. Overall, we have the whale. Whale is like the card of great mystery, great spirit. It is a very Piscean card, the card of interconnectedness of all things, the subconscious even. The black egg, throat chakra, ooh. 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 You gotta speak up. You gotta speak up and speak from a place of, from deep within your soul, from deep truth too. Just deep, undeniable soulful truth your own truth or if you're needing to stand up to somebody the truth that someone is out of line the truth that someone is really just trying to keep you down honestly interesting let's pull some tarot cards what is going on here for my fire signs What is going on for my fire signs? Fire signs, Aries, Leo, Sag. Am I taking these? Yeah. Woo! Wow. Wow. We have the Emperor, King of Cups. Very masculine. Very masculine energy going on there. King of Cups is actually my Stingray card, too, which is the first card you got. The Moon, the Star. You know your path. That's what I just heard and the Two of Swords. Up to this point of the Two of Swords, fire signs, this is you knowing your path on a deep, emotional, psychic, divine level. Star cards come up for a lot of people today. You know your path, so follow it. You don't gotta get stuck. You don't gotta get confused especially if it's coming from someone outside of you or something outside of you getting in your freaking way. You know your path. Follow it. Any other messages or insights for my fire signs? Aries, Leo, Sag. Justice, land, landing on that set that I just showed you, landing on all of this, justice. You know your path, follow it. Don't let anyone get in your way. It's pretty simple. Am I taking these? No. 
Any other messages or insights for my fire signs? Aries, Leo, Sag. What is this? Mm. Six of Cups and the Ace of Swords. Six of Cups is past energy. It's also my patterns card. So it's like childhood stuff, family stuff, past life stuff, nostalgia, butterflies. It could also be like yummy, goody, like that excited butterfly feeling, like I said before, right? There's something about your patterns or past connections, like family connections. For so family connections, some of you it's past connections, some of you it's your own patterns that you need to see here. That Ace of Swords is like, hello, you need to reflect on this. Like, like, like that's what I'm getting. It's like, it's the it, like that that's what I'm getting. That's honestly what I'm getting. It's like whatever your patterns are or past or something about your past connections or family connections is showing you how you're you're not like following through and living your best life on how you're getting stuck at the two of swords. Who who's who are you allowing to get you stuck at the two of swords? Who are you allowing to get in your way? What are you allowing to get in your way? Some of you it's a pattern. Some of you you have a pattern and you keep getting in your own way. Some of you it's someone from your past. Some of you it's a family it's a family member. But it's like the the 6 of cups will show you. That's what I keep getting. The 6 of cups will show you. Anything else for my fire signs? Aries, Leo, Sag. <sighs> Belief system. Ah, Ten of Wands and the Hierophant. What's getting in your way, fire signs, seems to be rooted in the Six of Cups and the Hierophant. That to me feels like family teachings, family programs, family beliefs, and also your own patterns, your own belief system, your own story is also contributing to this. Some of you, it's someone in, in quote unquote in power, someone again who sees themselves above you, could even be someone who's a teacher, a mentor of yours, or somebody who's like a matriarch or patriarch in the family. But it, like, again, whether it's a physical person or it's your own patterns, that's what's getting in the way. That's what's getting in the way here. Just because someone thinks they know better doesn't mean they do. Just because someone has, known you your whole life because they're a family member doesn't mean they know your path or what's best for you doesn't mean they can get in your way doesn't mean they can tell you what to do doesn't mean that they have a right to stop you or to make you feel bad about you following your own path and if this is about your own patterns and belief systems you, you need a new belief system <laughs> you, you need a new story fire signs you need a new story where you can go and live your best life because you know your path that's what i keep hearing you already know your path you know it you know your path so follow it let's see what else wants to come out hold on oh when you're sore, it just really hurts to bend over like that. We have Ace of Pentacles. Okay. I like the Ace of Pentacles. Anything else for my fire signs? Aries, Leo, Sag. Ooh. Okay, I like that. We have Queen of... Ooh. Cards flying out of my hands today. We have the Queen of Pentacles and the Ace of Pentacles. The Queen is contemplating her pentacle, how to nurture it, how to devote to it, how to hold on to it, how to maintain it, how to make it happen. Again, you know your path. Ace of Pentacles has the pathway to walk through, the portal to walk through. You know your path. You know it. So walk it, nurture it. Don't let anybody get in your way. Overall, we have Page of Cups, Ten of Pentacles. This feels like admitting. This feels like a confession, a confession or admitting um, to someone, even if it's just to yourself, but it's like almost feels like to a higher power even. I, I, don't, I don't like that feeling though, because some of you that is a physical person, like you're putting someone on a pedestal, like a mentor or a teacher or someone that you look at as wiser than you. And, and that, there's nothing wrong with respecting people who are wiser than you and seeking out their counsel but it doesn't mean they know what's best for you. You know what's best for you. 
But anyway, so this being in the overall, this just feels like being very honest and real with yourself about the path that you know is yours. The ace to the ten. The steps you start to take to get you to where you know you want to be and what is really for you. It's being honest about it. Whether, again, it's to yourself or to um, someone outside of you. And again, if this isn't about needing to stand up to somebody, it's about you getting very real about your past and your patterns and how you're getting in your own way here. Based off of your story and your belief systems. Okay. Okay. All right, guys, that's it. I'm going to go. I hope you really enjoyed this. Again, I'm sorry for my energy. I know it was a lot today. I was like irritated and angry and I was tired. <laughs> my crown's hurting, but I love you guys. I hope you have an amazing week. Um, I will be doing a, um, a live for the new moon Scorpio. Probably the ninth-ish? Ninth-ish check patreon as we get closer to that day because i usually post it like a day or two before um i go live so check start checking patreon around like the 7th or 8th basically I, I would just check it on the 7th no the 8th check it on the 7th and the 8th <laughs> okay all right guys i'm gonna go i love you take care have a great night bye